January 8th. Bye. New Year's intention setting sound healing and meditation concert in Yellow Springs at Mindfully Well Center. other and seeing each other we're connecting through the world wide web the cyberspace the internet um, interesting factoid um, the founder of our lineage of kundalini yoga uh, yogi bhajan predicted back in like the early 70s when he first came to america and first started lecturing and teaching kundalini yoga and things and he said in the Aquarian age in the future um, you know remember that song this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius that was like in the 60s or 70s right 70s so that that was the, the sort of the transition and then there was a turning point where we were fully into the age of Aquarius on December 12 21st of 2012 the big uh, end of the Mayan calendar date and uh, so you see all these shifts because of uh, the implementation of technology, communicating with everyone around the world. And so when Yogi Bhajan first came over from India, he would, he would talk about the coming of this age in like the early 70s. And he would point at his wrist and he would say, when the Aquarian age comes, you'll have all the information in the world at the touch of a button. You'll have all communication with everyone in the world at the touch of a button with technology. And, you know, if you remember, some people maybe were around in the 70s a little bit. I, I came into this um, lifetime in 1985, but um, it's kind of like my parents' generation. And, um, you, you know, you probably couldn't have even fathomed what we have now with the internet, right? Like, you actually can talk to people all around the world at the same time, and there's just infinite information, more than you could ever learn in a lifetime, at your fingertips. And it, we actually do have those Apple Watches, you know, where you, so it's like on your wrist, like some, that would have been like some futuristic sci-fi Star Trek thing, you know, if, if someone said that. And now we have that now that we're in the age of Aquarius. So, I am inclined to believe uh, a yogic master who was able to predict the coming of this age uh, when he gave other predictions and um, gave technology the tools, the practices, kriyas, meditations, postures, asanas, dietary recommendations, um, you know, herbal medicines, uh, stuff for cleaning your body, cleaning out your subconscious. It's like full body, mind, spirit, lifestyle is what Yogi Bhajan gave in the Kundalini lineage. Um, so he said that we would have you know, all this information and communications, but he also said it would be sort of overwhelming, right? Like when you open up your email and there's just thousands of emails, that's, that's a problem that I have at least managing like three different email addresses for my old studio and you know my old one and um, then there's like the new one that because they keep getting flooded with spam and so if you think about you know how that can be kind of stressful to have so much communication and so much information sort of filling up and inundating your consciousness uh, this is why we have meditation it's uh, described as like taking out the trash um, you know some things we want to hold on to and remember uh, but a lot of stuff we don't need, you know, like, um, say, for example, traumas um, are things that your mind really focuses on and remembers and repeats over and over to try to protect you. But um, really just 
the chances of that same sort of trauma happening again are pretty low. Would you agree as a psychologist? Yes. So, mo so we have a professional psychologist that has, uh, this is just my assumption that, and, and actually I've seen studies where um, at least 70, 80 percent or more of uh, what people are afraid of doesn't happen. Uh, people worry and fear and stress themselves out needlessly. And, you know, you get that cortisol, you get the stress hormones, you get high blood pressure, heart rate, low breathing, the whole fight or flight response in your nervous system because you're thinking that something bad might happen. And, and this is pretty prevalent right now with uh, COVID era, as I like to call it, CE, 2021 CE, in the COVID era, when there's so much fear, uh, there's just like a insurrection, like a sort of revolution that these people are broke into the Capitol and the police like helped them and stuff. And so there's a lot going on in the Aquarian age. And we're also in a larger time called Kali Yuga. Are you familiar with the Yugas at all from, from the Vedas? This is like uh, the Hindu cosmology from, uh, say, 5,000, 10,000 years ago. There's some debate about um, when it was actually uh, sort of channeled from these divine beings. But it's the oldest holy book in the world, and they have a larger scale of time so we have, you know, hours in the day, days in the week, in the month, in the year. And the year is pretty much our largest span of time that we measure, right? You have, you know, maybe say decades or millennia, and but even then, the millennia would be our uh, largest 2,000 year um, sort of period. But in the, the conception of the yugas, there's, like I said, the Aquarian age, um, which is about a 2,500 year cycle. So we've got a, a good, uh, at least 2,400 some uh, years left in the Aquarian age. And this in the Yuga, it's like more like 250,000 years. They're in the hundreds of thousands. So they cycle through, it's like the golden age, the Sat Yuga, the silver age, like Treta Yuga, and um, I, f I forget the name for the Bronze Age, but then there's the Iron Age, which is what we're living in right now, Kali Yuga. And does anyone know about Kali at all? The uh, goddess of, she's a mother goddess, but she's very fierce. She's kind of like that grizzly bear that will just tear apart anyone to protect its cubs. So it's a, it's a very fierce um, sort of love that she offers. And um, so we're in her time <laughs> in Kali Yuga. And uh, Kali Yuga is characterized by uh, falsehood, the uh, lack of truth, um, and quarrel and strife, chaos, right? people fighting with each other. So when you see these things that I mentioned um, in the news, in politics, and what's going on in the world, or even in your own uh, personal relationships in your life. So think about, you know, that's the time that we're living in. That's not something that's wrong with you because it's happening to everyone, okay? This is what we're all in the same boat together. Um, we're in the Aquarian age, which is a great advantage that we have all the information and communication available. Um, it's also a time when people are treated equally. So in the previous age, in the Piscean age, there, it was all about hierarchy. So, you know, you had to go to a priest and they would go to the cardinal and to the pope and it was like you and your boss and your boss's boss. And we still have some of that hierarchy, but have you noticed, you know, a lot of people don't have bosses. A lot of people work for themselves now. More and more people have started their own businesses. More and more people do things like Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and, you know, they're kind of uh, making their own way. And that's because this is a nature of the Aquarian age that it's egalitarian. There's more equality. And so you see people 
uprising um, against oppression. We had the largest march in human history, the women's marches that were happening a few years ago. Um, so one thing that, you know, so, so we have advantages of the Aquarian age, uh, and then we also have some challenges that are posed by it, and we're given these meditations to help remedy that. And with Kali Yuga, uh, you know, in the time with the least amount of truth, you know, in Sat Yuga, Sat means truth. In the Golden Age, it might have been hundreds of thousands of years ago, it might have been a million years ago, which, you know, mainstream archaeology doesn't even recognize that human uh, civilization was around at that time, but some people uh, believe that, and you know, some people say that the pyramids are like 15,000 years old, and but they're only they're dated at like 6,000 or something. But um, you can watch Ancient Aliens if you want to learn more about different theories of archaeology and human history. But um, one important thing, a uh, last kind of thing I want to mention about this is, um, I was listening to the City Guru Granth Sahib, the um, holy book of the Sikhs. It's all these devotional poems and songs, and he's, he, you know, they're talking about how we're in this illusion, this material world, Maya, and there's so much quarrel and strife and difficulty to cross the world ocean. And he says, and, and here we are you know, in Kali Yuga, in the Iron Age, the age of falsehood and quarrel, but it is the best age, is what, is what the guru had said. So... It, we're basically, it's like we're playing a video game on hard mode, is how I think of it. It's like we're lifting a really heavy weight. It's mo the most difficult uh, thing that you can do, but therefore, it's the most powerful. It's the best teacher. It's, it's going to help our souls evolve and grow by lifting that weight, by facing those challenges. Um, like I've talked about in every... Uh, of the, the previous sessions that we've done here. Um, we talked about gratitude, giving, and receiving in the, the last two sessions. And this is for New Year's um, kind of intention setting, or what's actually even better than setting an intention is an affirmation. Because an intention is like, I want to do this in the future. I want to be like this in the future. but. An affirmation is, I am this, right here and now. And it's to feel the feelings of each of these statements or affirmations that we're going to make um, as we go through the chakras and chakra bouncing. Um, and so I want to read you this quote uh, in alignment with that. So um, we talked a lot about the different eras that we're living in, the Aquarian Age, Kali Yuga, and I'm starting to get into intention setting and making affirmations. So here's one that uh, I believe may be from Yogi Bhajan, um, but there's this picture of Krishna Kaur, and it says, May you never be afraid of your own excellence. With every breath, you have the opportunity to change, to transform, Use the breath to elevate yourself so that to that highest destiny and allow the breath to carry you across any and every obstacle. So something we do with New Year's intentions or New Year's resolutions, I guess is what they're normally called. Um, you try to say, you know, how can I live a better life? How can I feel better? How can I help others more? You know, whatever your resolution might be. It's to, to find your highest self, as we say, to be in alignment with your soul's purpose, your dharma, uh, to use your gifts to uplift yourself and others. So they said, may you never be afraid of your own excellence. And um, Marianne Williamson talks about this. This is a pretty well-known quote that you may have heard where she says, um, it's not our darkness, but it's our light that we are afraid of that we're afraid to shine because other people might, you know, feel less, feel inadequate or jealous or, you know, and that kind of thing happens. Um, but still, you know, 
we need to be we need to shine we need to be like the lighthouse is what yogi bhajan said we have to shine the way for others that's a very important uh task or duty that we're set upon so he said don't be afraid of your own excellence and with every breath you can influence your mind you can transform like you know and i do this anytime i start to feel uh, the breath has become shallow i start to get stressed anytime i'm really sleepy i'm driving like on the way here <laughs> um i do a little breath of fire you know it's like <laughs> it's a sort of panting breath <clears throat> so the breath can be used to energize yourself to bring mental clarity um, or to calm yourself, uh, which is normally kind of what you what you use it for. You can hold the breath and use the bodily locks. This is kind of stuff we do in Kundalini Yoga. So we'll have more videos uh, t to share, so you can get into more of that stuff. But um, one more thing I want to do before we get into our stretching. I want to just give you a reading. So, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I, a lot of times I let people draw cards in my classes. And uh, I'm going to try to do this virtually. Okay, ra raise your hand when, when you pick, when I pick the right card. Whoever wants to choose it. That one? That one? I don't know if you can see the cards. Oh. Got some jumpers here. All right. So you have chosen success. Perfect. This is uh, certainly in alignment with uh, what we're aiming for for New Year's resolution. This is this person riding on a tiger, a huge tiger across the world, and streamers and confetti all coming down from the sky, like a big celebration of his success. I'll give you the, uh, the kind of interpretation of that. That's a good omen. I want to learn about um, what the Chinese calendar has to say. Like, you know, we had the year of the dog, the year of the pig last year, and what, what is coming up now, that's like in February, I think, where we switch to the Chinese New Year. So for the success card, it says, this character is obviously on top of the world right now. The whole world is celebrating his success with a ticker tape parade. Because of your willingness to accept the recent challenges of life, you are now, or you soon will be, enjoying a wonderful ride on the tiger of success. Welcome it, enjoy it, and share your joy with others. And remember that all bright parades have a beginning and an end. If you keep this in mind and squeeze every drop of juice out of the happiness you are experiencing now, you will be able to take the future as it comes without regrets. So don't be tempted to try to hold on to this abundant moment or coat it in plastic so that it lasts forever. The greatest wisdom is to keep in mind with all the phenomena in the parade of your life, whether they be valleys or peaks, is that this too shall pass. Celebrate, yes, and keep on riding the tiger. So excellent omens for prosperity and success for the uh, new year. And then this is an excerpt from some of Osho's teachings from his books. He said, watch the waves in the ocean. The higher the wave goes, the deeper is the wake that follows it. One moment you are the wave, another moment you are the hollow wake that follows. Enjoy both. Don't get addicted to one. Don't say, I would always like to be on the peak. It is not possible. Simply see the fact it is not possible. It has never happened and it will never happen. It is simply impossible. Not in the nature of things, then what to do? Enjoy the peak while it lasts and then enjoy the valley when it comes. What is wrong with the valley? What is wrong with being low? It is a relaxation. A peak is an excitement, and no one can exist continuously in an excitement. He, he gives a lot of good philosophy on that subject of 
uh, happiness versus sadness and how, why both are necessary and equal. Um, I like to give the example of like the sun and the moon, uh, day and night. It's like, which one is better? You don't usually hear people say, oh, I only like the daytime. I don't like the nighttime. I only like the nighttime. I don't, like, that doesn't even make sense because we understand that we need both to be in balance, right? And it's actually the same thing with all dualities in life. Um, so there's some food for thought for uh, your intention setting. So if you have a little uh, cushion you can sit up on, a little rolled up blanket to elevate your sitting bones, um, you might want something to write with. Um, not totally necessary, but if you, um, you could also journal after the session is done if you remember, um, but we're gonna do chakra balancing meditation and then um, it's gonna be, you know, at least like 45 minutes of music and you might go into a trance and forget your uh, intentions and affirmations. So that's the only things you might need is a blanket, a pillow, and uh, something to write on and a writing utensil if you wanna do that, but then, once you get your uh, cushion and sit up, that lifts up the sitting bones, the knees drop down. We'll roll the shoulders up and back a few times. Let your shoulders relax down your back. The chin drawn inwards. Just breathing, let the belly fill up, let the heart fill up with the breath. Bring the left palm over your heart, right palm over the navel. Feel the belly expanding as you inhale. Feel the heart expanding. And feel the sensation of your palms, your fingers, your energy. Does it feel warm or cold? And then start to send some energy through your palms, through your fingers, through your entire hands, sending yourself a little blessing, a little self-love, healing. They were doing these studies now where they measure the photons, the light that's given off. Uh, it's, it's imperceptible to the naked eye, but our cells give off light and our organs and things give off different amounts of light, photons. And they, they studied how much comes from the heart and then they had the people meditate on loving feelings, meditating on their hearts and the photons increased like a thousand fold. So there's real stuff happening there. So breathe deep into your heart, breathe love and healing into your heart. Envision that light there. Maybe it's white, maybe it's green. You get to choose. Traditionally with the chakras is green. And let's just take one more deep inhale here and hold it at the top for a moment. Holding your heart, holding your body with self-love. Then sigh it out. <sighs> Join your palms together, rubbing to awaken the dormant energy. And then coming to your heart, so the thumbs connect to the breastbone. Let's do a couple more of those sighing breaths. So we inhale through the nose, sigh it out your mouth. <sighs> And one more. <sighs> All the breath out. And just breathing normally. Feel this mudra balancing the two sides of your body, two hemispheres of your brain, masculine, feminine, rational, creative. 
And we're going to use the mantra of the Kundalini Yoga lineage of Yogi Bhajan. Uh, this is how we begin every class around the world, every home practice. We use this mantra to connect with the highest self, connecting with the wisdom of the universe, the golden chain of teachers. Um, it's kind of uh, bowing your individual ego mind self to your higher self, uh, the spirit, the super soul. So it's Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. That vibration of the universe, O-N-G, Ong, and then Namo, meaning to honor that. Guru Dev, the great celestial wisdom, Namo, honoring that. So we do three times holding it out long, Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo, and we'll inhale to begin. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo Om Namo Guru Dev tension in the body and the face all relaxed as you hold and then as you exhale release your palms down as you inhale sweep them up until they come together as you exhale clear down through your field till you touch the ground take a few more with your deepest breath inhaling all the way up exhaling all the way down mindful movement synchronized with the breath as though the breath were carrying your wings upwards, clearing the electromagnetic field, the aura. I'm just gathering some energy with the deepest breath. This lets you get the deepest breath possible when you come up through that 60 degree angle. That position of the arms allows the chest and the upper lungs to open maximally. So we'll do one more. Hold at the top. Inhale more. Stretch a little higher. And then on the exhale, coming down to the third eye, through the heart, honoring mind and heart, and release. And then we're going to roll forwards to a tabletop on all fours for a little cat cow. just briefly to help you uh, stretch your spine. So we get the palms flat with the fingers spread directly under the shoulders. The hits of your elbows roll forwards. So your elbows themselves are pointed back. And then you inhale as you rise, exhale as you round. And the inhale pushing the floor away, lifting the face. And the exhale round and draw your navel in Continue like that, inhaling up, exhaling, rounding inwards, navel in towards the spine. Exhale round, inhale to neutral, and let's come back to seated, and give you a little side bend. So I'm walking my left arm out to the side, right arm is up and bending to the left. Try to keep both hips grounding down, breathing deeply into 
the side body, ribs, and shoulder. And you can decide if you want to go further. We're just going to do a few more breaths. And stay here, but we're just going to circle that top arm, exhaling down, inhaling up and around a few times. So help clear the shoulder. Now on your next inhale, both arms up. And we bend to the right, the right hand walking out. I find it's easier if you keep that right bottom arm straight and breathe deep into your left side body, ribs, shoulder. Then circling, exhaling down, inhaling up overhead. On your next inhale, both arms up. Exhale down. Stretch your legs out and shake them out. My knee just popped. <laughs> that was lovely. So I kind of bounce the knees as long as that feels okay for you. You can also increase the stretch by shifting, leaning forward towards your legs and using the hands for leverage. Just nice and easy. We're just loosening a bit so that you can relax more comfortably. It's the original purpose of all the hundreds and thousands of postures within yoga was just to give a person energy circulation and comfort so they could sit and meditate for longer periods of time and reach the true goals of yoga, of the mind and the spirit. Maybe lean forward a little more, get a little more. Let's take an inhale here, and as you exhale, go all the way down. Just breathe a few breaths, sinking deeper and deeper with a long spine. It's like you're trying to bring your heart over your knees. All right, on an inhale, rising up and drawing the soles of the feet together. Let's do a brief little hip opener, kind of bouncing those knees a bit. And walking yourself off the flesh of the sitting bones. All right, so now sit up with a tall spine and try to extend that spine. So what you don't want to just round down. You want to extend and go forward and out and then round down. Just keep breathing here. Let yourself go deeper with every exhale, you empty the breath, navel draws in, and you fall a little deeper. You can also press your elbows to your legs gently if you want more stretch. start to come back up, just tucking your feet back to cross-legged, easy pose as we say. And one more little therapeutic thing, uh, the neck rolls. So roll the shoulders, let them down your back. You start to lower your chin towards your chest and start to roll your head to the right, inhaling up and back, exhaling down through the chest. If you have um, injury or sensitivity with the neck, then you don't have to go back all the way. You would make smaller circles, or if it feels good, 
full. Cycle everything loose, shoulders, face, jaw, loose. To the left, still inhaling up and back, exhaling down, round. Good, inhale to center. And we're ready for chakra balancing meditation. So we're gonna go through each of these energy centers. Um, don't worry too much about you know the, the symbols of the chakras or how the energy vortexes come in and out and uh, all that esoteric stuff. What we really wanna focus on, each one is associated with physical organs of your body which have different purposes. So there's sort of symbolic, mystical things associated with the chakras, but there's very, it's very real world, real life applications. Um, so we'll go through each one. I'll give you um, some of the qualities that you can think about. If something resonates with you that you want to work on, um, then you can, or you can jot that down. But there's a mudra for each chakra too. So the first one, you interlock your pinky fingers and it's just relaxed in your lap, like so. Muladhara. So you can close your eyes and just envision this area, uh, the base of the spine, kind of where your sitting bones are connecting to the support to the earth. Muladhara, red light, the root chakra. And this is trust, fearlessness, being grounded in the moment, not afraid. And this is the foundation upon which everything else needs to be built, earth element. So I'll, I'll give you these affirmations that you can repeat after me. And um, don't worry about like what your voice sounds like. You can be muted. It's it's fine if you if you don't want to hear your voice. But like I said, you want to feel it. Like we're never just going through the the motions. We're feeling it, internalizing it. So say these things to yourself like you mean them, and you'll be able to manifest them better. And then we'll vibrate the Sanskrit seed syllable for each chakra, which in this case is Lam. It goes lam, vam, ram, yam, sham, and ong, ham. And <laughs> they all end in am, is what I'm pointing out. So this is lam. But the English affirmation you can do here is to repeat after me. I trust more, I fear less. Let's go ahead. I trust more, I fear less. I am centered and grounded. I honor my body as a temple. I honor my body as a temple. And then we'll vibrate lam, 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 and then we'll do another deep breath and one long lam, and hold that M sound. Try to get your lips vibrating. That will activate the nerves and bring some energy. Inhale deep. Lam, 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 into that harmony, into that vibration. It takes you beyond time and space. It's beautiful. 
And you get uh, six more opportunities to do that. As we move up to the second chakra, interlock the ring fingers and it's below your navel. Orange light, svadhisthana, um, it's a water element. So here we're dealing with our emotions, desires, uh, the creative force like hormones, sexuality. Um, there's desire to satisfy the senses. And we know that if we're overly indulgent in chasing after addictions and desires, uh, it doesn't go well because like Osho said, you can never stay at the peak. There's always gonna be a valley and to honor that. Um, so here I'll, I will give you some affirmations to uh, let go of you know unhealthy habits and desires and things, but to honor the, the sacred creative force to honor all emotions. So you can repeat after me. I honor all my emotions. I honor all my emotions. I allow myself to feel. I allow myself to feel. Repressing nothing. Repressing nothing. I honor my creative force. I honor my creative force. And use it wisely. I release any unhealthy habits. I release any healthy habits. And then we vibrate the sound of Vam in a little bit higher pitch. Inhale deep. Vam, Vam, Vam. third chakra, interlocking the middle fingers and drawing in just below the navel itself. Um, the second chakra is located in your reproductive organs. This is um, more just below the navel. The navel itself is where energy comes in uh, through the umbilical cord and it's one of the first things that, that forms in the fetus. So it's where all the energy channels originate. Uh, you can think of your abdominal muscles, uh, adrenal glands, like the fire of digestion. Um, a lot of stuff goes on here, and we feel emotions in our gut. You know, when you get the butterflies in your stomach, when you're nervous or excited, um, that's because serotonin is produced in your gut. Um, the vast majority, like 90%. It, we, we think that thoughts and, and emotions and things all come from your brain, but a lot of it comes from the body, which is why each of these centers has its own sort of consciousness. They describe this as your second brain digestion. And uh, here we're dealing with willpower. So uh, I always encourage everyone to you know, stand up for yourself, uh, know that we're all equal, but you know you don't let people walk all over you. You don't let people abuse you, and you don't do that to other people because you know we're not higher or lower than anyone. We're all perfectly created as we're supposed to be, with all of our perfect imperfections to work on in these lives. But just as we should be. So there's no shame, no judgment, and this is balancing the ego. So golden light like the fire of the sun, Manipura, the lustrous gem. So you can affirm here, I stand in my power. I stand in my power. I am courageous and whole. I am courageous and whole. I am who I am. I am who I am. I am. I am. My will be done. In alignment with the divine. There's nothing above me, nothing below me. No one above me, no one below me. Now powerfully vibrate the sound of Ram. Inhale deep. 
Anjali mudra with the palms flat together and the thumbs gently pressed to the heart. That green light, anahata, the heart chakra is love, of course, uh, forgiveness of yourself and others, compassion for yourself and others. Um, sort of kindness and consideration of others, especially. Um, so we'll do some affirmations here to help increase the light and the openness of your heart. You can repeat after me. My heart is open. My heart is open. I let love in. I let love in. I express love freely. I live in peace and gratitude. I live in peace and gratitude. Forgiving everyone. Forgiving everyone. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I am love. I am. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. Just feel that for a moment. Feel your heart beating, the love for yourself, the good type of selfish. You can't give someone something you don't have. You can't give love unless you have it for yourself. And you won't feel like you deserve it unless you have it for yourself. So that's why we take care of the body, mind, emotions with this practice. You can watch this video every day like people do with a lot of my meditations and really increase that. There's more to it, but time is of the essence. So let's do the vibration here. In this case, it's yum. So yum, yum, yum. I got love in my tum tum. Inhale deep. Yum, 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 yum. forgiveness, that compassion to all beings everywhere, every beat of your heart rippling out, pure love for all beings. And now we'll move up to the throat chakra, open lotus mudra, just the thumbs, pinkies connected, the wrists connected, thumbs connect to your, your voice box, that little notch in your uh, your neck and your collarbones. Um, so your voice box is what gives you the ability to communicate, to vibrate with your voice. And this is a very powerful thing that we've been doing for a while now. Um, and I'll be doing more uh, expression, but you know, if you have a lot of love in your heart and you can't express that to someone, they might not know it, they might not feel it. We can express love in those five love languages, right? Through um, touch and gifts and services. But uh, words are, are very powerful in manifesting things, you know, creating things. Like you tell someone you're going to do something, and then when it comes time to do it, you don't want to do it. But, you know, maybe you still should because uh, you don't want to let them down. And something, and I'm sure you'll still enjoy yourself when you actually do it. You know, it's just our motivation waxes and wanes. So I think it's very important to honor our word. 
and do what we say we're going to do and don't be flaky. <laughs> so I'll let you uh, clear the throat chakra here. Uh, clearing out especially falsehood, you know, in this Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel and falsehood, uh, we need to bring truth. We need to honor our words. That's where our character comes from. So you can repeat after me, and this is a sky blue color. Um, Vishuddha is uh, the element of ether, which is sort of like what holds space. So we're getting more etheric, more into the, the heavenly chakras. And we're going to um, affirm here, I speak my truth. I speak my truth. Clearly, confidently, truthfully. Clearly, confidently, truthfully. I honor my word. I honor my word. I use my words to create, not destroy. I use my words to create, not destroy. To uplift, not to slander. because those intentions come back to me. And before we vibrate here, I always like to mention the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, who said, when you speak, you should only speak that which is beneficial to the situation, that which is uh, honest, you know, always, um, what is it? It's, it's that which is beneficial, that's what is necessary. Only speak when it's necessary, when it's beneficial, and when it's truthful. That's letting your words pass through those three doors. And we'll vibrate, clearing the throat chakra with a good vibration. Hum. Inhale. Hum, 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 hum. fingers with just that index Jupiter finger extended coming to the third eye so the thumbs or the one thumb touches between your eyebrows and you roll your eyes up like you're gazing at that point where your thumbs are touching that's the third eye point purple color Ajna Chakra this is the mind the vision of your eyes and the vision beyond your eyes. The mind's eye. All the psychic abilities that can be awakened here, the siddhis, the psychic spiritual powers that yogis develop to be able to see clearly is very important. To be able to see when it's just your mind creating negativity and fears and not let that control you. Um, to be able to see things in your life clearly, like we said, to be honest in your words. This is being honest with yourself in your thoughts and having a clear mind so you can see uh, the best path for you, like um, negative mind, there's these three modes of the mind, and I like to talk on and on while people's arms are up like this, because if you're not used to kindling, your arms will get sore. But no, I'll try to wrap it up. Um, so the negative mind sees everything as negative, as dangers. Um, positive mind sees everything as positive, uh, which I call the rose-colored glasses or naivete. And the neutral mind sees things as they are, as neutral. So we assign things good, bad, like, dislike, positive, negative. But if you look at something long enough, you'll see pros and cons to anything, which means that everything is neutral. And some things are, you know, you may choose more beneficial in your life and you may more uh, have those guidelines and things and that's perfectly fine, but it is important to have a clear mind. So, we will affirm here, I see clearly. I use my mind, it doesn't use me. I am not my mind. 
I am not my ego. I am spirit. I am consciousness. All right, and we vibrate the sound shyam. Inhale. Shyam, 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 shyam. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, release. Palms face up in Gyan Mudra. First finger and thumb connect. Other fingers stretch out. Grounding, breathing, meditating at the third eye. And then roll your eyes up all the way, like you're trying to look out the crown of your head with your eyes closed. And envision just above the crown of your head a thousand petaled lotus, ever blooming, blooming and blooming. Pure white light streaming down from the center of the universe. Blooming open, that light filling up the lotus making it glow, and then streaming down through the third eye, throat chakra, heart, navel point, the lower two chakras to the base of the spine and to every cell of your body till it's glowing, healing, and bringing awareness, enlightenment, as we say, light everywhere. Like you're just bathing, glowing, and healing from that light. Crown chakra is the connection with spirit, with divinity. Some people call God, but I like to use the word the universe because we need to understand that it's everywhere, in everything, in everyone. Quantum mechanics uh, are starting to understand this, the energy that's in every atom and even in the spaces in between everything that holds the universe together. Uh, that is described as the sound of Aung. And this is the hum of sort of the, the engine of the life force of the universe. This is where your soul enters and leaves the body when you're born and when you leave the body, the tenth gate, as we call it, the crown chakra, Sahasra. So, uh, I'll give you some affirmations here. You can repeat after me. I honor my spirit. I am spirit. All is spirit. I honor my source. I honor the divine. I am divine. All is divine. Vibrate one single sound of Aung. Inhale. start to come down to your back using any pillows or blankets to cover up, to support yourself. If you have sensitive knees, I would recommend some support under the knees. Under your spine is an option where it runs all the way along your spine long ways. Or under your head if you like.
Once you get down onto your back, you can roll your shoulders underneath your body. Just let your eyes roll back. Let the head be heavy. The jaw released, even if your mouth opens up, it's okay. You Traditionally, the palms face up, but they can also be on your body. But relaxing through the fingers, the arms, getting heavier, relaxing deeper. The spine heavy down to the hips, belly relaxed, leg muscles are loose and the feet just flop open naturally with every little toe relaxed. And just for the next few breaths, every time you exhale, let go a little more. You exhale, you release, soften. You exhale again, deeper, more relaxed.
Satguru Prasad Ek
Signs of life found in him through my open ears, inciting and inviting me. Limitless undying love which shines around me like a million suns, it calls me on and on across the universe.
suffering for all beings. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings dwell in equanimity, free of attachment and aversion. May all beings prosper live in bliss and harmony and may the thoughts, words, and actions of our lives contribute to that well-being, that happiness for all. It is about time to gently, slowly start to come back to your body. You don't have to sit up yet. Just Deepening the breath, inviting some little movements to fingers, toes. Honoring yourself for completing this practice. Taking some good steps towards well-being, body, mind, and spirit. All the chakras, all the aspects of your being. So now some larger movements. You can roll out your wrists and ankles. And when you're ready, stretching your arms up past your head, take a full body stretch from head to toe. Inhale, stretch, sigh it out. <sighs> Hug your right knee towards your chest and draw it down towards the floor on your left, keeping both shoulders down on your mat. And just a brief little spinal adjustment, twist, cat stretch. Then coming back to center for the other side. You hug the left knee towards your chest and guide it down to your right. Emptying the breath, emptying the belly to get further. And when you're ready, coming back to center, start to rub the soles of your feet together, rub your palms together to bring circulation, grounding yourself back into the body after gong bath, you start to rock and roll forwards and back. You can hold on to your outside your knees and interlaced fingers, rock and roll forwards and back a few times. Or if that doesn't feel good, just roll to your side and we'll come to seated. So once again, finding that tall, supported spine And we do a little song at the end of every Kundalini yoga class, if you haven't taken Kundalini before. Every class around the world for the past 50 years has ended with this song. Uh, it's called the Long Time Sun Song, and it's a nice little um, affirmation in itself, uh, intentions for healing. First, you dedicate it to yourself the first time you sing it, the second time you send it out to someone else who needs it, and the last time goes out to all beings everywhere. So um, if you're not comfortable with your voice, that's okay, we can't hear you anyway. Um, but there's no need for fear or judgment. I used to not ever sing and didn't think singing was cool. I used to not be flexible at all until I started taking yoga classes and then I transformed, but we can talk more about that if you want in a little bit. 
for now, we do our three rounds Long Time Sun, which comes from a Celtic blessing. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, the pure light within you guide your way on. First for yourself, then sending it out, send it to the world's leaders, all those in need, all beings. together at your heart. Inhale to begin. May the long time sunshine upon you. All love surround you. And the pure light within you. Guide your way on. Send it out. Inhale. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within me guide your way on. Once more for all beings, inhale. May the long time sunshine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. meaning the true name, the true self. Inhale. So true self, your spirit. So one more time, I am truth. May you be blessed, blissful, bountiful, and beautiful, healthy, happy, and holy. Peace to all, light to all, and love to all. I'd like to sincerely thank Rosemary and Joseph for running this. Joseph's on the soundboards, running all these microphones and keeping the stream sounding great. Uh, Rosemary for inviting me and hosting me at Mindfully Well Center here in Yellow Springs. It's always a beautiful experience. It's always just too short. <laughs> But uh, it takes me a while. I, I to, to dabble in all my different instruments. Yeah, I brought the sitar this time and was getting into, you know, I just kind of improvise based on the flow of the energy, the shakti, the flow of the moment, uh, what type of energy I feel like wants to come through. And um, I wanted to play those couple of songs for you, but I have lots of other songs in um, the other videos the one from December 11th I just posted, and uh, that has some like Native American style med uh, medicine songs. We didn't really do those tonight, but um, there's the Hare Krishna combined with Amazing Grace that we did last month. That's really a nice um, joining of, 
of the energies of East and West devotional songs with Ad Sach Jugad Sach Mantra. And oh, we did the Servant of Peace, the uh, Lord, give me, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace, uh, St. Francis prayer combined with the Ad Sach Mantra. So um, that's a good video. And if you, if you enjoy these experiences, if you haven't already, you can give a little donation. Um, honestly, you know, if every little dollar helps just to help me pay for gas, but I, I do this because I love it and I want to offer um, some healing to the world. But if, if you feel inclined, I have a, a PayPal, al.x.everett at gmail.com and a Venmo, uh, which is sadhanam Singh. And uh, yeah, this is the last of the three in this series. So uh, it's, it might be snowy now. At least I'm glad it didn't snow around this time so I could get out here from Columbus. It's actually only 40 minutes from where I work at the Amazon warehouse, and so that's already 30 minutes west of where I live on the east side. But um, yes, spring concert series, because that's what I was thinking was February might be really cold and snowy, but uh, maybe late March or April. So stay tuned for some announcements about spring concert series. And um, I teach every Tuesday and Thursday nights at 7.30. Um, Thursday nights, 7.30 class is Kundalini, which is um, kind of in the same vibration what we were doing tonight, but with more energizing, like uh, calorie burning types of movements. That's another way of relieving stress. This is more the yin the, versus the yang. The, the, this is like the lunar, like the relaxation energy. And... Kundalini is is both. It's more fire, but then you have relaxation. And I always play the gong. And uh, Tuesday nights is yin. It's like this. It's like gentle therapeutic stretching with music and poetry and stuff. So um, that's through a studio called Yoga Wellbeing in Columbus, which is in church. And hopefully they'll uh, open up for in-person classes again. But right now everything is streamed on Zoom. So I want to um, open up the floor to you guys. Thank you. Oh, hi. Hi, thank you. It yeah, was very pleasure. wonderful. Good. Thank I'm, you. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I have lots of different songs that I do in different, um, I can only do so much. And I was, I was getting, I always get, want to talk more and more about the cosmology and the, the situation of this human life and all this stuff. But I try to, you know, you can think about things intellectually or you can like feel them spiritually. And that's how, how the music like transcends language and, and mental mm -hmm. understanding. So if you will carry this intention with us, particularly now um, with the Aquarian age unfolding, we need more opportunities for people to come together in community, in open community. And we are still going through this rough period, as uh, we talked about earlier, as we fully move into the Aquarian age. So let's not get caught up on the limitations. But, you know, tonight it was about intention setting. So let's hold this intention for the Mindfully Well Center, for Saturnam and, and the Kundalini Yoga tradition that we both carry. And... Um, We'll see it manifest in this year of 2021. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, do a little journaling if you want to remember any revelations you've had. And we'll see you back in the spring. Um, i got more videos on YouTube. You can just search up... Uh, Sadhana Mindfully Well Center or something like that. I think they should come up.